City. It's the Wendy Williams Show. Feel it, feel it. Oh, shake it, feel it, feel it, feel it. Now, here's Wendy. Let's get started. It's time for Hot Topics. Come on. Here at the show, there's a show that's on TV and then there's a whole show behind the scenes. And I always tell you that when I tell you the tickets are free. When I, believe me you, when I come out, right, and I have a mark on the floor that I'm supposed to you know, stand to and I'm, you know, the, the cameras and the lights and everything are positioned that way, but there's a whole lot of shenanigans going on behind the scenes, right, co <laughs> You know, people are running with my chair and she's trying not to spill my tea and they're putting the flowers up. And if I turn around and come over here even earlier than early, you will see all that crap. <laughs> Would you like to see it? Yeah. Wendy, wendyshow.com, the tickets are free. It's a real a circus behind the scenes. <laughs> it really is. Anyway, uh, so Tyrese, everyone, has reignited his custody battle with his long-suffering ex, Norma. Oh. And I say suffering, because I don't know anything about Norma. I, I know nothing about Norma. Nobody's ever said, you know, Norma smokes crack, Norma beats the baby. <laughs> you know, Norma is having underage sex with underage people. Nobody, no, 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 listen to me. I said nobody's ever said that. I'm giving you, <laughs> I'm giving you examples of things that might make a man not want their baby being around the baby's mother. Oh. See, the little girl now is two years old. Three, 10? Uh -huh. Oh, she's 10. Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> well, she's old enough to fight her own battles in court. <laughs> so listen, so they're, they, right now they have 50-50 custody of uh, Shayla, who's 10. Um, and 50, <laughs> that's good enough. I mean, if you're, if you're lucky enough to have a mother and father alive, then they should be in your life whether you're married or not. Like, a, 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 both parents are really important. So now Tyrese, though, is seeking full custody of Shayla. Oh. Like, what kind of man wants to rip a child from a mother? Oh. Zooin. <laughs> he says it's Shayla's uh, best interest to live with him and his wife. You remember Tyrese got married a couple years ago to another woman who happens to be pregnant right now with, with their baby, they're married. And so The Fast and the Furious is um, one of those movies that he does. Fast and Furious? Fast and Furious, yeah. It's shooting right now in Atlanta. And so she wants Shayla um, to be fully his and come live with him in Atlanta. Um, you know, he says that she would have a great time. She'd go to the best schools and she would live with the family in his new 2,300 square foot mansion. Well, I don't know what the size of a house has to do with what kind of parent you are. <laughs> you know what I mean? Wasn't, she, uh, wasn't Tyrese just asking for GoFundMe money or something like that to save his life? Tyrese, you're always pulling a stunt. Um, <laughs> uh, here's my thought. If Shayla... First of all, Shayla can talk to the courts herself and let her know, let the courts know, look, mommy and daddy, I love them both. Tyrese, I would hope that you wouldn't be prying this little girl with all kinds of Fast and Furious money stuff, you know, belongings to make Shayla feel as though she just wants to be with you. Kids are easily bribed. 
And I don't know uh, anything about um, his pregnant wife right now, but you know, it seemed to me this is where you jump in and you tell Tyrese he's out of his mind. Yeah. You're about to be a mom yourself. Yeah. You're about to be a mom yourself. Would you want somebody to you know, take full custody of your unborn? No. 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 So anyway, so back to the house. So they say it's six stories high. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's very large, 2,300 square feet. Uh, 23,000, excuse me. Oh. 23,000 square feet. If anything, to me, the bigger the house, the more the parents aren't really gonna be there to ha handle the kids. You know why? Because if you can afford a house like this, and that means you can afford all kinds of servants and babysitters and everything, but really paying attention to your kids. Like if I was the court, I wouldn't be impressed and I'd be looking at you, you Tyrese, you're not gonna win this. In the name of Norma, you're not gonna win this. So, ugh. <laughs> eh. There's a huge change coming with the Miss America pageant. Oh. Well, I was hoping the change would be that it will no longer be on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, so here's the change. Now, you know, there's this woman, Gretchen uh, Carlson, you know about her. She announced on Good Morning America today that um, she is, first of all, a chairwoman in, on the board of directors or something like that. She's got a position, but she was Miss America back in 1989. Wow. Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. So she says that it will no longer be called a pageant. It'll be called a competition, which to me is worse. You know, a, a pageant at least means you walk with style and grace and a book on your head. Competition means you're throwing down. You're, you're, you're ready, you know? Competition means everybody turn mean girl and may the best girl win. Anyway, so she goes, women will no longer be judged on their appearance. You know what? This is insane. We live in a time right now where people are so quick to judge people on appearances. And you know what, whether you like it or not, I don't see it going any more, uh, going any, um, I don't see it going backwards. Surgery is more affordable. Girls are wearing makeup younger. You know, guys are manscaping and stuff. <laughs> you know, I am not going to say appearance is everything, but we in our society seem to put a big, big, a big, big dollar amount on appearance. So, no, we're judging on appearance. Yeah. And, and furthermore, now, so, you know, so that, means, so that means if it's you and if you are, don't fit into a swimsuit the best like the girls used to do or, you know, you might have bad acne or something, you're qualified to be in the Miss America competition. Uh, they'll solely be judged, says uh, tr um, Brendan. I mean, <laughs> you know, Brendan. Right. Stay out of my face, Brendan. <laughs> they, will, they will solely be judged on, according to Gretchen, on their talent and their brains. Well, talent and brains are nice, but when you get up there and, oh, oh, by the way, and no more evening gowns. Oh, 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 are you ready? The contestants will wear the clothes that make them feel confident and express their own personal style. So a pair of Vans and some Adidas sweatpants is fine? Is that fine? You gotta be kidding me. And, and by the way, and yeah, lastly, no more sweatsuits. Why don't they just close the whole um, competition down, the whole pageant down? Anyway, you know, they give scholarship money to the winner, I, you know, behind it all, because we get all caught up in, you know, the beauty of it. But behind it all, it is a scholarship competition. And uh, the, uh, the 2019 Miss America competition airs Sunday, uh, September 9th at 9 o'clock on ABC. daughter and she wanted to be a beauty contestant or something like that, I would say, what are you talking about? <laughs> you know, you be beautiful and, you know, luminaire your face or whatever you're gonna do, you know, the, the makeup, the airbrush thing, but you better get your smarts and you better get your wits about you, <laughs> you know?
like this girl involved with Future. I'm not even going to say her name. If you would like to, you could bop, 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 bop through this whole story because it's so stupid. <laughs> but I felt the need to share this with you in the name of, this is, this is, what, this is what some women do. So she's an Instagram model. Oh. We're not showing a picture yet. Just everybody relax. <laughs> Her name is some sort of name. <laughs> she claims that Future left her stranded at a hotel after she didn't have sex with him. What? Well, okay, everybody. All right, first of all, Future is a platinum selling artist. Future star is like out of here now. We know who Future is. We don't know who this chick is. But she says that they spent three days at the recording studio, I guess three days while he was in Miami at some point or another, and they became friendly through the recording studio. Well, she's some sort of singer or rapper or something or another. And she says that um, they've been talking ever since March, when all of a sudden, Fe uh, Future asks her, come visit him in, in L.A., in L.A. Sorry. So she's claiming that Future told her to book her own flight because she was like, okay, book the flight. Like, <laughs> you don't even know how the game works. <laughs> what? I don't know if Future has a girlfriend or a wife or anything like that. It's not about Future cheating with somebody. It's just like, no, I'm busy being a superstar. You're on the come up. You book your own flight, and then Future said, I will pay you back for the flight when you get here. Don't book first class and all that crap. Don't, <laughs> don't go all crazy. So she, she booked a $550 flight, and she claims that Future says to her, you know, I got you 1,000. But that's street vernacular to me for, I'm gonna pay you back the $550, not give you $5,500 when you get there. <laughs> What kind of birds are swimming in your head, woman? <laughs> A lot of times I get mistaken for hating on women because I have to just put it down the way I see it. But you know, as a woman who's uh, earned a bit of success myself, I hate dumb women. Yeah. Like, I, like I, hate, I hate it. I hate it. I don't know much, I don't know what much to tell my son in certain situations. That's why I'm glad my husband is there for my uh, son. But when it comes to women and in your 18 years old, 19, 20, and you're trying to be in this business right here, I can tell you a lot and you are a hella stupid girl. <laughs> She books the flight, she gets to the hotel, she gets at the hotel, Future's not there. He left her a key at the front desk, so she settled in and then texted him. Let me read you some of these. <laughs> Honey. Remember, don't show the picture of the girl until after I put all this out here, okay? Future said, I have my son today, but I'm gonna break away to come see you for a sec. She says, okay, cool. Future says, get sexy. She says, I'm sorry, I'm not even on that type of time. I wanna chill tonight. Future says, he does that emoji where you smush your face. He says, catch you another time, no worries. The girl says, you ain't coming here? Future says, you playing, SMH. Then the girl says, I didn't know that's what you wanted to do. Oh. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I would have told you. Future says, no worries. Then the girl says, sorry, I'm not that type. Then Future says, understood. Then the girl says, okay, cool. So I won't see you at all. Future says, I'm good, love, enjoy. Oh. And, the, and the girl says, and the girl says, Wow. You see, I don't know what part of the game she thought that she was entering, but uh, you, you, you are an internet girl. You wanna be an artist. You think that future is flying you in and out and you're not gonna have to put out. I'm not saying that all men are, but I'm just saying, this is future, man. 
Besides, the way you present yourself sometimes is the way men receive you. Hit it! Excuse me. And the other one? Let, let's, see, let's see the other one. Okay, you can take that off. Put future back up. So look, so the girl wants attention. She's less than smart. Her Facebook page is still public. She's going crazy. She changed her profile picture. I don't know what to. She said uh, something about people or people saying that she looks like Nicki Minaj as she's strutting through the LA airport to try to get back to, um, Look, Future hasn't responded, and Future, you shouldn't respond. This, this girl is a casualty of sometimes what women do. By the way, did you watch Pose on FX on Sunday? I liked it. I liked it, I liked it a lot. I cried at the end. I liked it, I loved the acting and I love the storylines, and I love that Janet Mock is in the background, you know, like as opposed to being on. <laughs> Janet is bossing up the situation. A really good show. I'll be back next Sunday night, too. Yeah. And I think the girl is like 20 years old or something like that, but you know, you walk around the streets like that, you put all these pictures up on your Instagram, you show up at the studio all those nights, and dumbbell. <laughs> so. <laughs> so Ashley Simpson recently revealed uh, that there was a very awkward experience in the delivery room. When she was giving birth to she and her husband, Evan Ross, you know that's Diana Ross's son. Uh, giving birth, uh, it was only she and Evan in the delivery room along with the doctors. All of a sudden, you see Diana Ross and her hair like <laughs> peeking, peeking around the curtain, peeking around the curtain. Finally, she couldn't take peeking anymore and she just busted in the room and joined him. <laughs> Ow, get out of my vagina. This is supposed to be our moment on one hand. Uh, but how do you say no to Diana Ross? Even if you're a doctor at the hospital, if you own the, it's like Diana Ross. You know she's there for good, not evil. This is her youngest child, one of two of her sons. You know she's happy as a clam that they, you know, that they were having this baby. But my feeling about the delivery room is that that's supposed to be for who the woman wants. Like, that's not supposed to be for my mother-in-law. That's supposed to be for my mom, right? Also, there aren't supposed to be bustins. It's supposed to be invite only. You should just invited her knowing that she was gonna be all excited and happy about it. That's a funny story though. By the way, these two, um, they have a reality show. They have a deal with a reality show. I don't, want, I don't care to see Ashley and, and, um, and Evan in a reality show. Even if Diana does appear on the show, and even if Tracy Ellis Ross, Diana's daughter and Evan's sister, show up at the show, I, I just don't, I don't know what Evan and, and Ashley do. She hasn't made music in years. He's gotten a few acting jobs, but everybody can't pull off a reality show. Some people's reality is just not that interesting. Yeah. So, Ariana Grande, um, have you heard about this? Okay, so she's with this guy, uh, Pete Davidson. Now he's, he's on SNL, and they've only been dating for 16 days. <laughs> but he already has two tattoos paying homage. He got the initial tattoo on his hand, on his thumb, uh-huh. And then right behind his ear, he's got that bunny mask that she likes to wear. Yeah. You know what? I would swear I was dating the killer. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's not his first time around in celebrity life. He used to date Larry David's daughter. You know, Larry David has lots of money and his daughter is very smart, but we don't know who his daughter is, like on red carpets and stuff, whereas now it's a whole new game with this Ariana Grande. I mean, she's on the cover of Vogue now, by the way, looking fabulous. Um, right? Yeah. 
They told her, bring everything but the ponytail, and she did. You look great. But I would think that I'd be dealing with the killer if a guy got tattoos after 16 days. And then what if you slowly want to break up with him after two months because authentically you're finding it weird. If you break up with him all of a sudden, like I feel like I have to change the lock, call the cops, and maybe arrange for a new girlfriend for him to keep him preoccupied. I just, <laughs> nutty, you know? Didn't I tell you they'd get back together? I just didn't know it'd be 24 hours. Sophia, Richie, and Scott Disick. Back together, here they are, walking down the street, having a good time. No, they aren't holding hands. He looks a little tense. They're back together. So this is all, I'm sure, for the Keeping Up With The Kardashians, where she has a contract, allegedly, to be on the show, part of the plot line. And so, Lionel, you're a Richie, man. I know, there's nothing you could do. Sophia's 19, you know. You're not the boss of me, dad. <laughs> messy, 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 messy. So the list of, a list of California's top delinquent tax uh, non-payers <laughs> has been released. And some, some of the winners include Macy Gray, who, well, she owes $240,991. Which is not as bad as Chris Tucker. He owes, allegedly, $1.2 million. But he's blaming it on poor accounting and poor business management. Oh, I hate these lists. And of course, Tori and Dean are, yes, they're still with us. Yeah, they owe, they owe um, $282,655. I really wanted to, uh, there's no time to get to Will and Jada's son, Jaden. Have that. I, I mean, was trying to, to, right to get now? to it. <laughs> okay, let's do it. I think you got Perfect. time. All right, good. All right, so, cause no, they're, they're telling me it's time to go for commercial, okay. So I like this story, I like this story because you know what, I've rethought my position as I was slipping into my dress and my wig this morning. You know, Jade, <laughs> Jade no, cause no, we have, a, we have a big morning meeting and everybody's there and everybody's putting ideas into each other's head but there's only one person who comes out here to do the show and I've got my moment by myself with my sandwich in the morning and you know, by myself and I'm rethinking. So Jada uh, Pinkett Smith and Will let their son Jaden move out of the house when he was just 15 years old. Well, she explained on her, um, she's got a red table talk show. And so she explained on her show yesterday, take a look and then we'll talk. At 15 years old, Jaden, and I remember this day specifically, it was mm -hmm. probably one of the most heartbreaking moments of, of my life. Mm -hmm. You got to a point where you told me straight up, you were like, mom, I have to leave here to live my life. Totally. And I remember thinking to myself, as devastated as I was, I was like, he's right. Yeah. The time is now. He's 15. It's time for him to leave the house. Well, <laughs> look, my actual opinion is, oh, hell no. <laughs> but but here's, here's my thought. Only reason why, oh hell no, is because there's so many things that kids need to learn before they take that step into college or whatever they do once they graduate from high school. I don't even know if the boy is in school. I don't know, you know. He's a Pinkett Smith. Maybe they feel as though he doesn't need his uh, education and to be in the parents' house and they've got money and stuff. But whether he's a Pinkett Smith or not, I, you know, a boy needs a home structure between 15 and 17 or 18. So does a girl. And that guidance that comes from home. You know, hearing the parents talk, us talking to you. If, if you wanna do, you know, um, uh, business retreats during the summer, if you wanna go off with your friends to, you know, do something grown, but you can't move out of the house. As a matter of fact, if you wanna divide the house, that's your half. <laughs> and, and so now, now, now you just, just get yourself a job and I'm gonna divide the refrigerator, these are your groceries and stuff, and you, you know, th th there's your entrance for your friends to come over and everything, but no, you're not leaving the house at 15. But that's what people do when they send their children to boarding school, right? Boarding school's what, from 13 to 17, or 18. You know, I, but I'm, I'm still not, I'm not down with the boarding school thing either. I just, 
you only have your kids for a moment of time and they have to learn so much stuff from us. Anyway, and that's my opinion. So, we've got more great show for you today, everybody. All the girls are waiting for superstar, superfly star, Trevor Jackson. He's here. So grab a snack and come on.